Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, I want to cover Google's random interview questions. And what do I mean by random? Well, when I was working at Google in 2013, we received guidance, and that guidance was, hey, we're no longer asking trick questions. And while candidly it took a couple of years to flush out those questions, now what Google's doing is they're still asking what I would call very random questions. And why do they still ask random questions? It really has nothing to do with the job. It has to do with you building position connectivity. And if you can build position connectivity with these types of questions, and add that good structure, organization, and level of detail, you will do great. We're gonna go high level through some items that are gonna help you have success, and then we're gonna do a sample question, specifically, open a pastry shop. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Item one, the why. So we've definitely discussed the why, in a lot of different videos and in this particular video the why is really what do you do when you face a tough situation and in this specific case a tough interview question can you demonstrate transferable skills in the interview that will be critical to success in the job and as i've mentioned numerous times google is hiring you for that specific position but when we get to the hiring committee stage they are really looking for your overall fit. Are you a fit and do you match the long-term potential of the organization? And really answering these questions can be a game changer for your success, not only with the interviewer, but ultimately down the road with hiring committee. Item two, structure, organization, and level of detail. This is something that I mentioned in the intro and it's something that we talk about at practiceinterviews.com with all of our clients. If you can get these three critical components right, you are going to have success in any interview. But especially when it comes to random questions, you have to go in and start with a planned structure. And we're gonna chat about this item in a second. Secondly, you have to organize the information in a meaningful way meaning don't answer all at once, create a back and forth. And then lastly, with these random questions, you have to understand that too much detail is too much detail. Provide some level of detail, again, create that back and forth. What I see with a lot of clients answering this question is a five to 10 minute brain dump of all the information. And that ultimately is not going to yield success, remember, Less is more with these questions. Create that good back and forth. Item three, the CFS model. And so the CFS model is for open-ended questions, whether random or not random. And so we've talked about this numerous times. Let's briefly cover it. But CFS stands for clarify, framework, solution. So if we're gonna start with clarifying and creating that great structure, we're gonna ask about three to five questions. Think high level, we're not getting too granular yet, maybe a little bit of granularity. And then for the cadence, this is the confusing part. Typically we're asking one tops two questions with a question pause. The rest we're really gonna wanna do our best to group those answers together. The reason being, it just creates a better dialogue with our interviewer. At the end of those questions, you have to pause and check in and ask your interviewer if they can provide you with any more detail. You're trying to not move forward too fast without seeing if they want to give you additional details, additional data. It's really going to help you have success. Second, the framework. So simply put, a framework is just introducing some high level concepts that are starting to get to the problem solving of the question. but. They're really before assumptions, before you make that hypothesis. Think really high level and not a lot of context or additional information in the framework. So for example, if you're gonna introduce a concept such as goals and objectives, 
you don't have to talk about short-term goals and long-term goals and coming up with that shared vision. All of that is assumed. So just introduce the concept such as goals and objectives. I will show you and demonstrate the cadence in our screen share. Lastly, the solution. The number one missed item on these questions is think about making it role specific. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, I'm interviewing you to fill a specific need and the more connectivity you can bring in through the randomness, the better. So, for example, if you're interviewing for an engineering job, maybe you're gonna put a little bit more of a technical spin on it. If you're interviewing for a program manager job, maybe you put a little bit more strategy behind it. Build that connectivity that your interviewer needs to hear to make them feel like, hey, they're hiring you for this position and you're a good fit for that role. Item four, okay, let's go ahead and dive over into the screen share. Okay, let's tackle open a pastry shop. We are going to start with clarifying questions. The best way to cover clarifying questions is typically to ask a first question, pause, then group the rest of your questions together the reason being is lots of starts and stops when you've been asked a question, it creates a really weird cadence. And so you just want to create that good ebb and flow, good back and forth, and usually grouping questions works well. So let's kind of tackle it together. So Sue, let's have Sue be our fake interviewer for the day. Sue, have I ever opened a pastry shop before? Pause. Then let's group our other questions together. So Sue, I'd be curious, does it have to be a physical store? Like, can it be an online shop? Can it be a food truck? If it is a physical shop, I'd want to really know if it needed to be a standalone entity. These communal spaces with lots of eateries are really popular now. So maybe it could be in a communal space, or maybe I could have a setup in a high-end grocery store like a Whole Foods. I'd also be wanting to know, hey, is this a franchise? Because that's gonna give me a lot of information, a lot of processes, logistics would already be in place. I definitely wanna know who my stakeholders are. So do I have partners? Do I have investors? Do I have a famous pastry chef, for example? And then of course, lastly, one other simplistic question I'd wanna know, Sue, is do I have a specific timeline and budget that I'd be focused on? Can you answer any of these questions for me? Provide any more direction for me? And again, you're gonna pause, see if Sue can answer any questions for you. Remember, you can ask a million questions. It's so open-ended and people get really caught up on the location, but we can get to that data point later. It's really not that important. Um, maybe if you were doing like a data center site selection role, it might be important, but otherwise you don't wanna to put too much emphasis on location. It's usually not a huge item that would be role specific or come up in these roles. Okay, let's move on from the clarifying questions to the framework. So with the framework, what we're really doing is we're talking through the high level concepts that we think Sue might be engaged with, be interested in. And so let's talk through the cadence of how I would introduce these concepts. Okay, Sue, based on the data that you've provided, let's talk through some of the critical items I would be thinking about if I was gonna open a pastry shop. So the first thing I'd wanna know is goals and objectives. I'd really wanna understand historical data, my connection to pastries. Uh, I'd really wanna understand the needs and do a market assessment. I'd really wanna understand how I'm resourced. Of course, opening any sort of physical store, uh, it, there's some risk involved, so I'd be thinking about risk. Absolutely would wanna know who my stakeholders are with a store, logistics, online store, physical store, logistics are gonna be important. How am I gonna market it? And what are my success metrics? So what I did here was added very little additional context to each item. You are literally just presenting concepts. You're not really presenting any additional data because you'll do that in the solution. You'll do that when you make assumptions. And 
remember, this is where we're going to start to make our framework a little bit more role focused. This is a very generic framework that may not encapsulate all the ideas that you have, the way that you envision this question. This is really pretty high level. Okay, let's get to the last part, the solution. Okay, this is where I really want you to think role specific. So let's say I'm a customer engineer interviewing for GCP. Well, one of the biggest things I'm gonna focus on is I'm thinking about my customer, I'm thinking about like the product space. So I might say, Sue, you know, based on the answers you've given me and those high level concepts, let's start by focusing on needs. And so one of the things I would probably be doing is I'd be doing some research. I'd be looking at some market analysis, the competitive landscape. I definitely might want to do like a proof of concept, uh, maybe do some free trials. I might want to like set up at a you know, maybe a weekly farmer's market to test some of my products, for example, and that would help me understand product alignment and the testing component. I want to make sure that I can scale this. Um, so what am I doing to make it scalable? What am I doing to make sure that consistently the product that I'm delivering is reliable and availability as well? You know, and that might go back to some logistical items like hours, but Am I making sure that I have the products that my customers want and making sure that those are available and available the most, of course, et cetera. So this might be how you start to chop in for the solution for a customer engineer, for example. One critical item on the solutions is to remember that initial solution should be about 60 to 90 seconds. Then you're going to check in with Sue again to see if she wants to dive deeper on any of those concepts or expand on another concept that you introduced in your framework. So again, let's take a different spin in the solution. Maybe I'm interviewing for a program manager of supply chain. Okay, we're definitely going to start with logistics. So this is where location might become a little bit more important. We could talk through that. We could talk through the size of our location. Again, in a communal space, you're only probably going to have about 50 to 100 square feet. So it's going to be a totally different setup. With the internal setup, I'd probably be talking through how we set up the station or stations to make sure that we have high levels of sufficiency, of, of efficiency. We're definitely going to be talking about supplies. Maybe this is where we get a little bit more on some technical components like a point of sale system, etc. It's just going to be a little bit of a different lean. So remember, when you're solving for opening a pastry shop, you're specifically focusing on the skills that you would need to be successful in that role. And you're really looking for that correlation. You're just trying to get as close as possible to have success, but build in that connectivity. To sum up, I didn't want to create too long of a video. They always end up being a little longer than anticipated, but what I want you to really be thinking about is bringing that great structure and organization to your answers and then in the solution really building in the connectivity. You're not going to get too granular, it's not going to be exact, but the goal is to help your interviewer visualize you in the role. I really hope this video helps. These random questions can be really tricky. Good luck.